Good morning everyone. So it is a beautiful new year. Actually, this is January 2nd. Um, this is Monday, January 2nd, 2023. And I thought I'd kind of talk about different thoughts about what I'm going to be working on this year. And here in Oklahoma, it's a balmy 60 degrees with a chance of rain and also a chance of severe storms. So go figure. Wintertime, severe storms, you never know. As always, there's a lot going on. That's just the way things are. In the middle of a thousand things at the same time. Not literally a thousand. Ah, I might be able to come up with a thousand things. <laughs> Obviously, I've got a lot of more projects I want to work on this year, a lot of cleanup I want to do, and then we've got other projects that aren't exactly more projects that I really want to get into um, as time allows. So I've got a list of zero turn mowers that I want to get, well not all zero turns, we've got like the X320 that's sitting over here in the shop, and I think it's the D130 that we just recently worked on. So we've got a couple non-zero turn mowers that are on this list, uh, and this list it adds up, in my mind, to thinking I can make about $15,000 off of them. So my goal has been to try to get these mowers ready for springtime. And we've made good progress on a lot of them. There's some that I haven't even touched that could be major headaches and may not happen. So that's, that's a big thing. I want to get those done. Um, a lot of the mowers out back, I really want to see if I can start thinning the herd down a little bit. because. It just takes up a lot of space and it's just potential money that's not been converted into money yet. So I'd like to get things moving so I have more space and be freed up to do more interesting stuff. We've got the hit list of nice mowers and we've got the, all the other mowers out there. All the other mowers out there, if I had the time, I think they'd be worth almost $15,000 selling various ones fixed up and parting out other ones. But it just takes a lot of time. and. I'll be frank, I don't have a ton of time because I'm working a regular full-time job. Uh, I need to spend time with family and stuff like that. Both more important things than doing this. This is what I do for fun as a hobby and a side hustle. So with that said, um, yeah, there's lots of potential. Really, we just want to keep working hard and stay at, stay at it, see if I can consistently put time towards these projects. Because every time I set a goal, um, it never really works out, so I don't really want to be setting goals. I just want to be able to try to make some good habits to keep working on things and getting stuff moving forward. But yeah, we've got some vehicle projects. Um, I can't wait to show you guys one of them. Um, it's a 1988 Isuzu Trooper. In my mind, very cool vehicle. To a lot of people, I may not have even heard of them, I don't know. So I want to work on that this year. I want to work a lot more on the Banshee, the other four-wheelers. I want to work on the mower I want as my personal mower, which is the Ferris 60 inch cut sitting right outside the shop here that I just rolled away the other day. And my truck, my poor truck, it needs attention because I just don't give it enough attention because those videos don't seem as interesting to make. It's a little more convoluted because I don't do that type of work as much. It's like electrical issues and miscellaneous stuff. I'm good at living with things not being perfect, so a lot of times I just use it the way it is. But now it's kind of in a condition where it kind of really needs to be worked on. So. You're going to get the joy of seeing some videos on that pretty soon. But yeah, let's go out and take a walk around. Before we get out the door, I will say, the shop can always use more cleanup. It came a long ways last year, um, but there's more that can happen this year. We've got the dirt work project over here that I want to get back into. Now that we have the box blade, I want to finish this up. I'm tired of the yard being torn up looking like that. But it's just one of those things where it's no longer an emergency. So here's the Ferris IS 3000 and quite frankly I don't know if this thing will ever really run again but we haven't really looked into it enough to find out. So yeah that's gonna be a fun project. The engine did crank over at one point. This mower is on the list. I actually if I get that one running this one is um, available to be sold. The Z425 I think is probably worth uh, between one and a half and two thousand running good. And we've got this one here. This one, um, I got it running well and I used it for a little while and then it had another electrical problem which I have not sorted out. That and uh, the fan self-destructed inside here. I don't know if you can even see that but the plastic fins on there started um, 
breaking and getting caught on stuff. And the seat could use a little work. The problem with this mower is that it's not really a well-known brand. So, I mean, I, I think this mower would be worth, I'm hoping to get a little over one and a half thousand for it. I don't know if I will. Not because this mower isn't worth it, because this is like a commercial grade mower. It's a heavy duty mower. It's probably the nicest mower I have here. One of the nicest ones I have here. There's only like two or three other ones that are close to the build quality of this one because it's got the full welded deck and all that stuff. But what's a Yazoo Keys? Even if it was the brand that manufactured mowers for Xmark. Uh, got this one here, hoping to get probably mid one and a half again for that one. Actually, probably a little less, maybe 1.2. Got this poor guy here. That's probably around $1,000 once it gets fixed up. It's not, never been super excited about it, but I do have a parts mower for it sitting up over there. This one here, I may actually start on this one pretty soon. We'll see. That one there, probably around 1,200 again. I just don't think the Craftsman Zero Turns have the same recognition. This one here, I'd probably be lucky to get 1,000 or 800 for that one. Oh yeah, there's the other Craftsman Zero. So that one's similar price. It's wider, but doesn't have a bagger. The D140, that one actually might be worth quite a bit. Probably around 15. This zero here, this one, if I can get it running well, might actually be worth almost the most of all of these. Because I sold an older version last year for like 1.8, 1800 or something like that. So this one's probably worth every bit of that. This little guy right here, tractor style zero turn. This one here, I don't think it's worth that much because I don't think these are really that sought after. They're more of a smaller market because people don't think of these when they think of a zero turn. In fact, I don't know if I've ever driven one of these, but it is a zero turn. Um, so I'm probably only gonna get maybe a thousand dollars for this. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think that's most of the mowers on the hit list. The X320 of course is sitting in the shop there. Yeah, it's really close to being good. It just had this funky issue where it will um, Stop running after, gosh, it could be 30 minutes of mowing. Something that I might not normally find on a mower because you have to do pretty extensive testing, but this mower is worth it. Once I get that fixed, I think this mower might be worth over $2,000. It is a nice mower. It needs to be washed off again, but yeah. So it's gonna be fun trying to get all those mowers up and going soon because if the weather's like this, spring's just around the corner, even though winter just began. Yeah, so that's that for the mower projects. So what I'd like to do is get some of those sold and then be in a good position when the spring market really hits to try to sell a bunch of mowers really quickly and have the ability to pick up some other mowers and do quick flips, um, even just no touch flips. I, well, I would be bringing them home and then selling them again, um, but no repairs needed. Yeah, just finding a zero turn that's for sale for like $1,000, kind of like we did last year and then maybe selling it for 1800 or find some for 700 and selling it for 1200 Things where you can make 500 to $1,000 without having to do much work if we're pretty sure that the market's hot enough to support it. Because I don't really want to get stuck sitting on something that I paid $1,000 for that um, the market cools off and is only worth 1100 or 1200 Because I don't want to have that much money tied up in that type of inventory, if I can avoid it, at least long term. So that's pretty exciting. Um, but I need to get the truck running and in good shape for that. So things on the truck, turn signals aren't, aren't working well, my odometer doesn't work real well, and my four wheel drive is not consistently going in and out. Then there's other minor annoyances like my back glass leaks some so my carpet gets wet, which is a little annoying. I'd like to put a real receiver hitch on there so I can level out the trailer. That would be, oh, I'd love to be able to do that. That would be so nice. Um, I've just been making do with the bumper hitch for a long time, but I, I am looking for a receiver hitch. It's just one of those things that was hard to justify in my mind because I, the trailer works the way it is. So why would I spend money on a hitch? But I think it'll be safer and work well and I'd like a higher load capacity than um, my bumper hitch. It's like 5,000 pounds and the truck is rated for 6,500. So. Also, we're trying to figure out about shed space do we want to try to redo the shop? That would be fantastic to tear this whole shop down and build another shop in its place. But that's a lot of dollar signs. So I don't know if that's going to happen this year, or next year, or the year after, or if it'll ever happen. I do have a lot of thoughts on how I could add on to this shop, but I just don't know how much time I really want to put into this shop because this shop has seen better days. It's been around, I don't know, probably 30 years. 
there's holes in the sheet metal in places so we want to put a lean-to off right here that one that's sitting over there that came off of the house and the plan for that is just to be a storage spot for all the four wheelers so i'm not storing them right behind the house anymore i've been walking around these roll-up doors for years now by a year and a half my plan for these roll-up doors was to put them along the back side of the shop so i wanted to just lift up the roof make it slope the other way and put roll-up doors all down the back side here but I uh, haven't done that yet. I don't know what I'm getting into when I try to do that. It sounds easy to jack up the roof, um, but I don't know if I'd be opening a can of worms. I've also thought if I reslope the roof like this, that I could add another section coming back down over here and basically double the shop size. That would be really cool. But again, how much work do we want to put into doing that? Right now um, we're getting this tent shed up and we may get another one next to it. So that's going to give me a lot of space to keep mowers out of the shop. Um, that with the lean-to on the front will be the lean-to will be great for more personal vehicles, and these will be great for mowers that are fixed up and I want to sell, or just nice mowers I'd like to keep out of the rain. Pretty exciting. There's lots of stuff going on. I really want to sell a lot more stuff so I can get the truck back here again, so I can unload mowers and things back here instead of having to do it down there or. In front of the shop so having a door on the back side and being able to get the truck out here would be fantastic all right so here's a quick sneak peek of this isuzu trooper i was talking about i really want to get this running in because it's just a blast to drive this thing it's just the size um the capability the the visibility there's so much space inside for the size of this vehicle because it's such a boxy design the windshield being almost upright comparatively you just have great visibility looking out the front and the back corners and this thing is four-wheel drive with a stick shift manual transmission now this thing's going to be a lot of fun to get up and running again hopefully we have a video on that uh sometime this year i'd like to use this for smaller mower pickups and stuff like that maybe here is the 425 all-wheel steer so my plans for this mower our, currently, my plan is to get it fixed up and use it as a backup mower for myself and also as a kind of a yard tractor to pull stuff around and maybe someday get a hitch on the back. We'll see. This is not on the sell list right now. I see this as kind of a crossover machine between um, the backhoe and a zero turn where it can mow and it can move stuff. And then I won't have to borrow my dad's Kubota as much. Although obviously with no front end loader, it's somewhat limited. And the good old backhoe. Right now this thing I think has a fuel pump that needs to be replaced, but it does run. I just haven't used it a lot lately because I guess I haven't had a lot of need to. And when I saw the fuel pump leaking, it kind of concerned me as a fire hazard. So, you know, safety, right? I've had this backhoe almost two years now. And as small and uh, winky dink as a termite might be or people might think they are, I am so thankful to have this machine here because it has done so much here and given me the capability to do so many different things. Don't underestimate one of these if you are looking for a personal machine. It's not a full-size excavator, it's not a skid loader. It's just a little machine that will work and work hard. And here we are at the Banshee, so I don't know how many people are still watching now, but if you are, chances are you're not one of the people that's only interested in the Banshee. You're the people interested in the mowers. Sorry. Anyway, the plan with the Banshee at this point is I want to get the rear tires fixed, get the grips on there, um, probably fix this little wiring stuff in there for the headlights and get it all washed off kind of general stuff like that and then i'm gonna have to really look into how i want to fix the exhaust mounts in the rear frame and i'd kind of like to just run it more and um, get to experience it and see what i learned from using it as far as things that i might need to fix and stuff like that so definitely there will be more videos on this um at least that's the plan the thing is is i don't really write it here for fun the only time i ever write it is when i'm making the videos because my yard is too small and that thing just eats up the yard like that like you you hit the throttle you hit the gas and you're across the yard it's a six speed and i don't know if i've ever gotten past like fourth gear that thing is incredibly fast to a guy who's used to lawnmowers and stuff like that and utility four-wheelers ah. So fast. Pretty exciting ride, but it's a lot of fun. 
I'd like to take it out to a writing area and uh, do a video out there at some point once we get it running a little bit more reliably. All right, so this video got kind of long and rambly, but um, basically that was just an update on where I'm at on a whole bunch of different projects. That's all stuff that is out there that can be worked on. My goal is just to try to put consistent work into stuff. It's not so much as to get everything done or get certain projects done, although I really would like to get certain projects done like the truck for instance because you know it's one of the more foundational pieces of equipment but um yeah so there's a lot to look forward to in 2023 hopefully um a lot of stuff that i haven't even talked about because it's stuff that i don't even know about yet but i am also very thankful to be where i am um at this point so we've been really blessed through 2022 and um the youtube channel is slowly but steadily picking up and building and I look forward to where that takes us as well because there's a lot of unknowns but that's okay. So anyway, as always guys, stay safe, keep making stories, and Happy New Year's! <laughs>